The first thing I'm going to do is add a line at y equals zero to the residual plot. This represents our model. So you can see our model performed very well for some values. This player who weighed 140 pounds um, had their height predicted perfectly by the model. So when we look through this computer output, we see we have a constant and weight. Weight is our explanatory variable. So this coefficient right here is our slope. Now the constant coefficient is our y-intercept. So our least squares regression line equation is predicted height or height hat equals 0 0.08744 times weight plus 0 0.5678416. Now, if you were to graph this using algebra methods, um, you'd probably start with the y-intercept, 56.8-ish, and then go up this amount for each weight. The problem is, when we look at our y-axis, we can't graph the y-intercept. It's not part of our axis here. So, any line can be graphed using just two points. So, let's find two points that we know will fit on our scatter plot. If we use our model to predict the height for a player that weighs 140 pounds, and also the height for a player that weighs 200 pounds, we'll have two points that will fit on our scatter plot. So when we multiply 140 times this slope, and then we add our y-intercept, we end up getting a value of about 69. Now when we do the same thing for 200, we end up getting a value of about 74.3. So here's two points that we can connect to create the graph of our least squares regression line. So actually this first point, 14069, corresponds with this point in the residual plot. Uh, we actually have a player that weighs exactly 140 pounds and is 69 inches. It's the one our model predicted perfectly. So there's our first point. We'll graph our other point at 274.3 and connect them. All right, there's our least squares regression line graphed on our original scatter plot. Now, correlation is R, but when we look through our computer output, we're not actually given R. We're given R squared, this value right here. Ignore R squared adjusted. So our R squared is 59.7. If we take the square root of that, we can get our R. Now, one word of caution here, when R gets squared, it becomes a positive number. So you need to look at the original scatter plot and determine was the direction negative or positive. Because when we're talking about the correlation, this could have been a negative 0.77, but our scatter plot shows a positive relationship. So we know our correlation is positive 0.7727. So to interpret this value, we'll say with a correlation of about 0.7727, there's a strong positive association between the weights and heights of the 2016 baseball players at Buchanan High School. Now in the residual plot, we have this one circled value, and we can see it has a negative residual of almost negative one. That means our model over predicted this particular player's height by almost one. We also know this player's weight was 160. So if we go to the original scatter plot to 160 pounds, we see this player who is actually shorter than our model would predict they were. And they're shorter by almost an inch. So this is the corresponding value. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.